Hello everyone, thank you for watching the channel. I'm Yaniv Hoffman. The advancements in information technology, such as adopting cloud technologies and Internet of Things, are bringing revolutionary changes to the IT systems and to corporate organizations. This revolution is also bringing new challenges as hacker and malicious actors are also improving their skills and are using new tools to compromise these IT systems and networks. Thus, it requires organizations to change even more their strategy and find a way to even strengthen it. So today, we'll speak about Zero Trust model. And what's on the agenda? Little bit on history. What is Zero Trust? Architecture and principles. Technologies behind it. Getting started. So let's start. So how did we get here? A bit of an history lesson. And I found this speech by Paul Simons, the CISO and CEO of Global Identity Foundation, during his session in RSA 2019. And I thought to go over it with you. So in the early 90s, we had the viruses, if it's real or not. In the mid 90s, we had the war dialing, you remember? Late 90s brought the deep packet inspection firewalls and then beginning of 2000s, the PKI, and late 2000s, the next generation firewall, and 2010, the AI and big data, everyone are speaking about it. And now, zero trust and SASE. But SASE is for the next video. So looking at Google for vendors that sell zero trust, you can see easily a couple of dozens of vendors. So is it a mission impossible? to understand what they offer? Do they offer the same when they speak about zero trust? Good afternoon, Mr. Hoffman. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to find out what zero trust and explain it in details, but in a simplified way. This message will self-destruct in five seconds. Oh gosh, but no worries. I'm ready for the task. So a bit of history. The term zero trust was first used in 2004 by a financial services forum in UK known as Jericho Forum, when they gathered at a forum meeting and started to talk about that they should not really trust anyone inside or outside the perimeters of the organization. Later on, in 2009, the term zero trust was coined by John Kidevag, an analyst in Forrester Research. And he started to discuss how organization might implement Zero Trust model to enhance their security posture. Five years later, Google started to work on Zero Trust architecture and implemented the model in their enterprise to improve cybersecurity inside and outside of its corporate perimeter. After implementing Zero Trust model, Google issued a white paper and termed their model as Beyond Corp. In 2019, NIST published Zero Trust Draft, and here we are today with established concept and architecture called Zero Trust. So what is Zero Trust? Zero Trust model or architecture is a security term used in cybersecurity, which states that enterprises should not trust anyone, whether they are inside or outside the enterprise perimeters. The Zero Trust lets enterprises to authenticate and authorize everyone before they are granted access to the corporate network and systems. The zero trust model revolves around the belief that never trust anyone. Zero trust model was introduced because the traditional security model, Kassel and Moat, is now considered an absolute by the cybersecurity professionals. In the Kassel and Moat traditional security model, Everyone and everything that is inside the network is trusted by default, while individuals outside the network are restricted to access the network resources. The key problem with that concept is that once an attacker gains access to the internal network, 
They can easily bypass all the security controls inside the network because all users inside the network perimeters are trusted by default. Another drawback of traditional Kassel and MOAT security concept is that organizations are no longer store their data in one place because today most of the data of an organization is now spread across the cloud, which makes it difficult for organizations to have a single security control. Though it was instrumental in earlier days, this model has long been exploited by hackers for the following three reasons. In zero trust model, organization cut all the accesses to their network resources to everyone until the individual is authenticated and authorized. The model does not allow any IP address, any machine or user until it's authorized by the network. Zero Trust model is designed to protect the modern organization environment from data breaches by using network segmentation, strong authentication, avoiding literal movement, and using least privileged access controls. The model is considered critical by the experts because of the digital transformation, increasing the breaches and continuous migration to the cloud. If zero trust is incorporated correctly, it will enhance the overall security posture of an organization with the minimum operational and overhead cost. Zero trust architecture. So according to NIS, the zero trust architecture consists of the following logical core components. One, subject. A subject is a device or users that wants to access the network resource of an enterprise. The second is resource. As the name shows, resource is a document or any other kind of file that is required by the subject to grant access to. Third is policy decision point, PDP. This component of architecture is responsible to define whether a subject is allowed or defined to access a certain enterprise resource or to disrupt the communication between the subject and the resource. This component is further divided into policy engine, a PE, and policy administrator, a PA. Policy engine is responsible for granting or denying access to the subject, while the policy administrator is responsible for establishing or terminating the communication between subject and a resource. PE uses enterprise policy for granting subject access, while PA uses authorization and authentication tokens to establish or terminate a subject session. The fourth is policy enforcement point, PEP, and this component acts as a gateway between the subject and the resource and the PDP issue to command the PEP to either establish or terminate connection between the subject and the resource. PEP is also responsible for monitor the entire session between the two. Therefore, it is also termed as a gatekeeper of the entire zero trust architecture infrastructure. The fifth is supplement, and this component is responsible to provide useful information, such as system logs, threat intelligence reports to the policy engines, therefore allows the PE to make more accurate decisions in order to improve the overall security posture of zero trust architecture. So what are the principles of zero trust architecture? And the following are the core principles behind the zero trust architecture. Ongoing monitoring and validation. And the concept behind zero trust is to assume that attackers are inside the perimeters of organization network and therefore the idea behind the continuous monitoring and validation is that no one either user or machine inside the network perimeter will be not trusted. All the activities of the users or machine will be verified and validated continuously and will be logged. Everyone will be forced to continuously verify its identity before granting access to certain network resources. Another principle is list privileges. And the idea behind this principle is to grant limited access to the network resources to the users and as much as required to complete their business operations. For example, general users will not be allowed to conduct activities that are permitted 
for the network and system administrator. The principle of fleece privileges involved around control and limited access of users to the network resources. The principle of device access control. And the, these principles requires the device that is part of the network is strictly controlled and are allowed only if it's authorized and validated by the network security controls. Zero Trust must ensure how many authorized devices are currently accessing the network resources and these devices are not compromised by the attackers. These principles will further improve the security posture of the network. Principle of micro-segmentation, and this is important. Micro-segmentation is the process of dividing the security perimeter of network into small manageable security zones. For example, micro-segmentation will break up a single data center of an enterprise into small secure zones for different authorized users based on least privileges access so that users of one zone will not be able to access resources of other zone. This will prevent attackers from literal movement across the network. Principle of preventing lateral movement. In cybersecurity, lateral movement of an attacker is defined as when attacker moves from one point of network to another point after gaining access to single point of network. In most of the cases, lateral movement of attacker is rarely detected. Therefore, Zero Trust is designed to contain attacker's lateral movement across the network. Since the network is segmented into small security zones, therefore attackers are not allowed to access other micro-segments because they will be required to authorize themselves before accessing other micro-segments. In a Zero Trust, once a device is detected and compromised, it is disconnected from the rest of the network to stop lateral movement of the hackers. Principle of multi-factor authentication. And this core principle of zero trust requires that users must provide multiple pieces of verification for gaining access to the network resources. For example, users will not be authorized by only entering their login credential, but they will also need to provide other piece of verification, such as one-time passwords sent to their mobile devices or their email address. Technologies behind zero trust. To put the zero trust architecture in practice, an enterprise must adopt the following three key technologies. Authentication and authorization. The first is crucial steps in any zero trust model is to implement the authentication, which means allow individuals to access certain network resources only once they provide valid credentials. Today, it can be achieved by technology such as multi-factor authentication, which requires multiple modes of verification for a user, such as one-time password, security questions, and biometric verifications, besides providing login credential to access the protected resource of a network. Once the user identity is verified, then authorization is used simultaneously to allow individuals to gain access to the network resources based on the least privilege policy. For example, both common users and administrator passes through the same process authentication, but common users are not allowed to add or delete a user account because of least privilege authorization. Encryption. Encryption in Zero Trust model means all sensitive data related to business customers, employees or other users must be stored in password protected database and must be encrypted in order to ensure the data is confidential even if the database is compromised by the hackers. The Zero Trust guidelines restrict public and government organizations to encrypt all of their trade secrets, legal documents, maps, systems information, user data, or any crucial information. Almost every organization is struggling to implement encryption at enterprise level because of key management and performance issue. Therefore, it is recommended for organizations to use comprehensive enterprise encryption solutions offered by the third-party vendors to keep organization data encrypted and secured at desired level. Security analytics. 
And this technology is considered as the building block of zero trust architecture and is used to detect and analyze cybersecurity threats in real time. The modern security analytic tools such as third generation firewalls, modern intrusion detection and prevention system uses real time and historical data of intrusions and build a machine learning model to detect and block real time threats. These third generation firewalls and IDS, IPS are exceptionally effective in blocking more intelligent threats and even prevent network and systems from zero day exploit. Security analytics are also used in real-time monitoring, diagnostics and reporting. The tools used in security analytics send alerts from the database servers and other endpoints of the network to network administrators quickly. The data from continuance monitoring and logging is further used by the security professionals to study the security posture of an organization. So getting started with zero trust. An organization must follow the following three steps to get started with zero trust. The first step getting started with zero trust is to identify all the users and devices that organization owns. Developing database of users and inventory of their own devices will allow the organization to keep track of this information, which will be further used to identify the users and resources that are required to access the protected network resources. Second step in implementing zero trust is to remove the implicit trust of the users and devices that are either located inside or outside the corporate network. All the devices either located inside or outside must be treated as users or devices connected to the internet. Organization can then segment the network into multiple micro segments by using technologies and protocols such as VLANs and access control lists. The final step is to externalize all the application and workflows to the internet by using the policy enforcing point, the PEP. The policy engine will perform service level authorization to either grant or deny access to the network's protected resources. So to summarize, what zero trust is not? It's not the next generation perimeter and certainly not VPN modernization. It's not an off the shelf product and it's not the only project of IT or either a one off project. And it's not about eliminating your internet, but it could be. Some corporates use that. So what zero trust should be in your organization? It should be a business enabler. It should be a state of mind, an architectural state of mind. When there is no security difference between the internet and the intranet, definitely it makes sense. And last but not least, a combination of processes and technologies. If you got that far, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. If you're still not a subscriber, please do. It will take you only a few seconds. And if you are interested in more topics like that, please add your comment in the description and I will be more than happy to address it. Until the next time, thank you very much.